Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we are going to be exploring Pachacamac, which is an ancient location located just south of Lima. So in order to get there, we are driving through the Miraflores neighborhood, which is one of the finer neighborhoods in Lima. Lima having a population of at least 11 million people. This uh, is the neighborhood of Chorrios now that we're going through. And this is the Pan American Highway heading south and north, and on the right hand side, Totora Reed, which is indigenous to the area. So now we're on a side road heading up, and we are now about to enter the huge Pachacamac complex, which is at least 2,000 years old. It's all basically adobe brick or mud brick construction and it is thousands of acres in scale. That is the Temple of the Sun in the background. Now very recently they opened this museum which is solely about the cultures that existed at Pachacamac. And as you can see it's kind of an austere building but it blends in very well with the environment and in fact part of it was built underground so it's a very unassuming complex, but I think quite a beautiful um, architectural achievement. Pachacamac, which is also known as the Lord of the Earthquake, uh, was an ancient deity, or is an ancient deity, that was worshipped by many different cultures in the pre-Columbian coastal area of Peru, going all the way up into the highlands towards Cusco and beyond. So here you see what the complex looks like today. Again, huge in scale. Influence extended up into the highlands and Andes of Peru. And up and down the coast as well. Even into Inca times, Pachacamac was revered as a seer. So here you see the location in Peru of where Pachacamac is located, right there. And Pachacamac, again, the Lord of the Earthquake means he who turns over the world. This is an example of the ancient Inca road system that extends into the highlands of Peru and beyond. A system of actually 25,000 miles or 40 kilometers of trails and roads. So now we're seeing some of the artifacts. We have the Chincha culture and the cultures of the north coast of Peru, as well as the Chancay of the um, Lima area. So during the Inca period, the spread of the cult of Pachacamac was made possible by the expansion of the Capacnian, or the main road, which integrated territories that today include Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. And here you see the ancient Inca road system extending all the way from southern Colombia to the center of Argentina and Chile. And these are spondylus shell, which are only found on the coast of Ecuador. So that shows extensive trade up until and beyond Inca times. And then various artifacts from different cultures that were influential at Pachacamac. The Inca, the Chincha, the Moche, the Chimu, etc. And this is a staff or a sculpture of Pachacamac himself. He has two faces, one on the front, one on the back, at the top of this wooden uh, staff. Fortunately, the camera wasn't able to get up to the top, but we'll see some video of what it looks like. So, myths collected in the 17th century attest to the fear and respect that the deity of Pachacamac, the life giver of the world, instilled among his devotees. One of the myths identified him as the god that generated earthquakes and tremors. 
and another pointed out that he provided humans with food after sacrificing a child of the sun god. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. That may have been made up by the, the um, Spanish or the Catholic missionaries. The idol of Pachacamac was placed in a chamber located at the top of the painted temple. The access to the chamber was small, barely allowing the passage of a single man. It was closed by a door. And here we see what the actual staff, which I think was found in the 1930s, looked like. And these are some of the ceremonial objects in amazing condition that were found at, at Pachacamac. So once again, this is what the archaeological site looks like today. In its prime, it was very beautiful and highly colorful. The chronicler Augustine de Zarate wrote in 1555 that the most notable people of the region were buried at Pachacamac, as many as 80,000. And these are human face effigies that were found at the site. And this is one of the temples, the way it originally looked. And these are Inca period artifacts in general, as well as Wadi on the left. This is called the Pyramid with the Ramp. That, of course, is how it originally looked, but it probably was colored on the outside. And then the Temple of the Sun, which is absolutely immense in scale. So these actually are quite easily identified as being Inca artifacts. They are vessels for holding chicha corn beer. And then the scale model, which is inside. Again, I believe it's thousands of acres in size. It's absolutely huge in terms of that which is still being protected, but it would have been much bigger at the time that it was functioning prior to the arrival of the Spanish. So again, the architecture is uh, quite simplistic, but that blends in very well with what the environment looks like in this very um, dusty and desert part of the coast of Peru. And a great addition is the fact that uh, once you leave the museum, there you see the Temple of the Sun in the background. And this is also recently opened, the ability to see the Temple of the Virgins of the Sun. Uh, this is the first time in 15 years that uh, I've been able to actually walk through here. And some of the things that I found were quite surprising. You have this very nice garden called an Inti Chakra which is the Inca language for sun garden. And here are planted all of the fruits and vegetables that existed during Inca times prior to the arrival of the Spanish. There are guards everywhere, which is probably a good thing. And so here you see the reconstruction or partial reconstruction of the Temple of the Virgins of the Sun. But what's very interesting is look at the lower rows of stone. Most of it is adobe, but at the bottom we find stone. And that stone is a basalt and it's not from this area. Very, very tight fitting stone blocks and that's indicative of a culture with more advanced technology than the Inca having once existed at Pachacamac and it likely puts the age of Pachacamac back several thousand years older than the Inca because in the highlands of Peru we find megalithic construction where you have tight-fitting stonework that could not have been done by the Inca and that indicates that a very advanced civilization once lived in the highlands of Peru and now we have evidence that they also existed on the coast. So like at many other ancient locations we see that advanced ancient technology once existed here at Pachacamac, and that makes the site much, much older than the Inca or the other cultures of the area. That was quite an insight because I had seen photographs of tight-fitting stone construction before, but we 
never were able to actually get this close to it. So that's a testimony to the Ministry of Culture of Peru that they are working uh, very hard and spending millions and millions of dollars improving the ancient um, archaeological sites of the area. No longer is the emphasis simply on Machu Picchu and maintaining its beauty, but also at other locations, literally from the southern part of Peru all the way to the north and from the Pacific coast into the Amazon jungle. So kudos to the government of Peru and the Ministry of Culture for all the fine work they're doing. So that was our tour of Pachacamac. This museum, I believe, has only been open since possibly the middle of 2018. And it's beautifully located and integrated into this ancient, mysterious, and fascinating location. So finally, a very brief view of Machu Pachacamac. There is the massive sun temple in the background, a completely artificial construction. And this is the museum. <laughs>